Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Um, today we are making a big boche. This is going to be about a six gallon boche. So, uh, if you know anything about a boche, it's, it is honey that has been not kind of burnt, really caramelized. So, we're using, um, I have about 23 pounds of honey in here. I'm going to use roughly about three and a half pounds per gallon. I'm using a, a uh, new bucket. This is a 7.9 gallon bucket. So that is going to give me plenty of headroom. Um, so I have to ultimately use more than about uh, s than six gallons. I'm gonna use roughly, this is four, I have another four gallon down here. I'm gonna use roughly about seven and a half, maybe almost eight, um, because I'm gonna lose a lot of sediment. The thing with the boche, burning the honey, you often create a lot of sediment, which means that your overall volume goes down. So it's gonna uh, end up being a very, very large meat. Um, now, the first step, uh, because the honey takes the longest, I'm going to get that started. I have used star sand and sanitized everything, and I'm ready to go ahead and start introducing things. So the first thing we're going to do is start getting some honey going, and I'll explain as I go what I'm doing exactly. All right, so what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to heat up this pot. Now, this isn't a massive pot. Um, and I'm gonna, because of how much honey I'm using, if I do my numbers correctly, I'm gonna use about, uh, let's say about 21 pounds of honey. So that's quite a bit of honey. Um, and I can't put it all in here at once, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it in kind of stages. And the first stage will be, um, I'm not sure, I'm gonna get a test run, maybe about eight gallons, or just eight pounds of honey. So let's see how much honey we can kind of get out in the first place. All right, so per recommendation of a couple of you guys, uh, I'm going to try and do a different method of measuring the honey. I'm going to take my big bucket, which I said um, this was when I got it uh, about 20, or excuse me, 63 pounds. So I'm assuming about three pounds of extra weight because it's a 60 pound pail. This weighs right now, I know you can't see, 26.2 pounds. So I'm assuming that three pounds of extra weight that's not honey. So uh, as I start pouring out, I'm gonna use that number and subtract and figure out how much honey I've actually used rather than uh, scoop it all out. So I'm gonna try a new process of pouring the honey into here. We're gonna see if that works. So I've just poured all this honey in. This is about 15.4 pounds of honey. I went ahead and, and um, uh, measured my bucket again, and so I got 15.4, which is this is good. I'm a good a good point to start here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our heat. Nothing too high or too crazy right now. And as this gets going, the thing that's tricky about a boche is you've got to be really careful about not burning yourself or getting um, or bubbling up. So what I'm gonna do is. Control it as it goes, like I said, not too high heat. And as I get going, I'll cover it, make sure there's no crazy bubbles flying at me. Um, but the goal of the boche is to take it and turn from this lighter color honey that we have here to a darker color, which will mean that it's starting to caramelize. You're caramelizing certain sugars, and um, that does two things. One, it changes the flavor of the honey, but two, it also takes the multi, uh, all the different sugars of the honey and it breaks them down in, in various ways, so they almost become non-fermentable at a certain point. I don't think I'll heat my honey so much that these all become non-fermentable, but I'm definitely gonna uh, add enough. So I'll probably keep this as it is right now and use the 15 pound of, of caramelized honey, and then I'll add some regular honey because the honey does provide nutrients, so have nutrients in it, so I don't wanna burn out all the nutrients. Uh, I do want to make sure that we, the yeast have some nutrients from the honey to chew on. So let's go ahead and let this sit. I'll do some kind of status updates as it's going along to see about um, you know how the colors are changing. And the first thing we're gonna do, of course, is to, is to get a starting color. So our starting color is, kind of seeing as it goes along, so our starting color is that right there. One thing you do want to do is make sure you're stirring quite a bit whenever you're doing this. Um, so you'll notice that the honey will start to get even more, of course it's a liquid, but it'll get 
thinner. And that's the first step. Now, if you don't stir the bottom, you're, you're basically just going to end up burning a lot of the honey on the bottom and it's not going to be... Uh, it, it'll ultimately hurt the rest of the honey. So as you're stirring, you're basically keeping that bottom from caramelizing too much. This is about, um, I'm about 10 minutes in and the color is still about the same um, and it's just really getting heated up. So this process takes a while. You don't want to turn it on high high because ultimately you might end up uh, heating the honey too fast and you don't want to mess that up because honey is expensive, especially with this. This is about 15 pounds of honey, like I said, and that'd be a really big bummer to lose all of it because I made a silly mistake. So uh, I'm using a wooden spoon because it's easier, it won't melt in the high heat. And then uh, I'm just kind of letting it sit here whenever I'm not using it and drip, of course, to keep the extra honey from uh, just disappearing. So we're going to continue to wait. I'm going to check every about, well, I'm going to do a, a, a little color test every about 15 minutes and then um, hopefully see how long it takes ultimately. I don't know exactly what color I want, but I do know I want a darker color than the original. Okay, so we're at 15 minutes. Let's see color-wise where we're at. Like I said, it's not really the honey is still heating up, so the color right now is nothing. It's not darker. It actually looks lighter. It's just because the slow quantity I did for the 15 minutes is less. So it looks lighter right now because ultimately it, it's not becoming, not becoming lighter, but it's getting thinner. So it'll start to get... Uh, It'll get a little thicker as I go along. That's the 15 minute mark. Okay, so the trick with this, you gotta be real careful. Uh, I was watching it fortunately, but I got it to a rolling boil and then the honey started bubbling up and um, it can get out of control really fast. So as you're going, make sure you're watching and stirring. And if I wasn't watching, this would have boiled over and ended up probably all over this stove. So I want it to be at a boil but I don't want it to be at such a boil that it, it, uh, it goes over. And we are now at the 30 minute mark. So I've turned the heat down a little bit. I want it to still be heating and, and all this stuff and the boil to just be a little bit lighter than what it was. So like right now, as I'm watching it, I'm still gonna be real careful. Let's look at our 30 minute mark here. So 30 minute mark. It's, it just now reached this, so it's not quite there to the different color yet, and that's totally okay. But I'm gonna be stirring this pretty consistently for the next little while. I want the color to change uh, even more, and it will as we start going along, but keeping it from going over. This is when it will really start to change colors as it boils and heats up and caramelizes. But, like this right here, right there, if I was not watching it just then, it would be all over my kitchen. So, which means I need to take the heat <laughs> whew, and turn it down. But that's not good. Gotta be real careful. Both shades are great tasting, but if you do it wrong, you are in trouble. So let's turn down the heat. We got it up to our boil. Just make sure we're not gonna go anywhere. And really, it's nice if you have a big, big pot um, because then there's lots of room for this foam to happen. And this, fortunately enough, I have a big enough pot. The first time I did the boche, I didn't have a big enough pot and it, um, it definitely was apparent. And I, I had a point where it started to um, boil over quite a bit. So I'm watching this. This boiling is fine. I want to go ahead and pull it off. Take, turn the heat down even more. Do a quick stir. Oh! And stirring uh, is important. And you want to stir slow because then if you don't, then you start to get lots of bubbles, lots of uh, foam. Now 
And this honey is hot. I mean, it is probably 200 degrees right now. So. All right, we're keeping our heat down. Watching it real slow, not gonna burn myself. So this has kind of turned into a game of uh, watch it almost, you know, start to heat up, boil all the stuff, and then uh, pull it off. So what I want to do now is see where it's at. This is the 45 minute mark. Yeah, we're already getting to a different color, which is good. That is our, if you can see, obviously the one at the end here is about 45 minute mark. I need to mark these other ones. This was uh, start. 15 minutes, the other one was 30, and that is 45. I want to go for a nice dark amber color, is what I'm going for. So we're going to let it keep going. Basically continue to play the game of watch it and keep it from boiling over. Okay, we're at the hour mark, and still playing the game of taking it off, bringing it back on, just trying to uh, make sure that it doesn't boil over. Let's go ahead and see where the uh, color's at now. So we're getting a little darker, just a shade darker from the, uh, I'm starting to show this exactly without tilting all over. So we're just a little bit darker than the 45 minute. I wanna get even darker than that. So I'm hoping that it'll be within the next about 30 minutes that I get it to the point. So let's go for another 15 minutes and I'll check back in a second. Here's the hour and 15 minute check, or 75 minutes as I put here. We are getting even darker than before. Kinda of tell, working our way through the system. I, I can't really turn it too much, but um, show you as we're going along. Here's a little picture of the plate currently. I'm gonna go ahead and keep um, keep it going. I want it to get even darker and I can tell I've tasted it a couple times compared to the original and it is getting a kind of a warmer darker roasted taste. I kind of like it so we press on. All right so we're at an hour. Let's get a quick little sample of this. Definitely darker. We're now the last little wheel, making our color wheel. Uh, I wanna go for about probably 15 more minutes and just see where that's at. So we're gonna go an hour 45. Now, the thing with this is it's a lot of honey, so it takes a while longer for it to caramelize and do all the things. Here's uh, 15 minutes later. All right, we're an hour and 45 minutes. So uh, quite a long time, but I really wanna make sure the color and all this stuff, all of the, gets to the point where I want it to be. So here's our next little sample. Now it's a little bit hard to tell because of the bubbles, but if you look closely, I mean you can really tell on the camera, you know, our starting point as we're getting darker. I believe this is the point where I want to stop. Now I'm gonna let this sit just like this. It needs to cool for one, you know, this honey is hot, really hot. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. I like this color. I think that the smoky, uh, the d dark, Darkness of the honey will also impact the smokiness and, and really give it the boche taste. And that's what's so important about this. Yes, I spent almost two hours just heating this honey to this point, but the boche taste comes from this right here, not from the yeast or anything. So this is gonna sit for a good, I don't know, a while, so it can start to cool down. We can now, since I wanted to um, wait to start my yeast so I could be on top of it, we're gonna start our yeast right here and then um, we will uh, start doing some must and all stuff. So here's the yeast portion now. All right, so we are ready to get the yeast water started. Of course, the first step is to heat it up to about 100 uh, degrees, so that won't take very long. And this is spring water, same water we we're going to use for everything else. I'm using the Lauven 
D47 today, uh, and I'm using two packets because this is a large mead, probably a six gallon mead, and generally these yeasts are gonna uh, have a harder time getting started just because this is caramelized honey, all these things. So, getting our yeast water going, we're also going to take and use, this is Go Firm Protect, sorry I can't focus, Go Firm Protect, and I want to get about, um, ultimately it's gonna be, since I'm using five, six, let's assume seven gallons of water, I need, or excuse me, goodness gracious, 10 grams of yeast, I need 12.5 grams of um, Go From Protect. So somebody recommended that I do this last time, which is take in with my scale, actually, uh, you know, instead of trying to measure it like a dummy, Use like a paper plate or something, and uh, hold on, it's not gonna like me right here. Okay, so using a paper plate, I'm gonna measure out my 12.5. So this is 8.5 grams right now. So I want to get up to uh, 20. What would that be? 23, 24 grams total weight. So we're going to start measuring this out. Let's try and do that. Side of this baggie. 24 grams is what we're shooting for. This is way easier, way smarter. I'm glad they recommended this. All right, so that's 24 grams of weight, which is my 12 and a half total. Now we're going to add the straight to water. This will help the water uh, be prepared for the yeast. It gets some nutrients into the mixed into the water. So as they are um, trying to rehydrate, they are also integrating um, their own like nutrients into their cell walls, and it just gives them greater life. So we're going to mix this in, and then we wait for it to get to 100 degrees. The thing with Go From Protect is you really have to mix super well. It does get kind of clumpy. And while the yeast will start to attack the clumps, it helps them where they don't have to work as hard to attack the clumps. So I'm gonna stir this up and try to get rid of all the clumps and then wait for it to get to 100 degrees. All right, we've reached our 100 degrees. We are ready to pitch our yeast into it. This is the rehydration temperature for the yeast. Uh, losing, using two T47s, like I said, and I'm gonna let the temperature slowly drop as the uh, as they rehydrate, and that will um, actually help the yeast out quite a bit because these are dry yeast, and dry yeast have a different process than just your generally, you know, like your um, your uh, white labs yeast or anything else. Those have a different protocol. These guys need to be rehydrated for about probably about 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna let them go. In the meantime, I'm actually gonna take and use my other, this was, if you're looking at this honey right here as it calms down, uh, this was 15.4 pounds of honey. I'm gonna add about, uh, I think I have roughly about four and 4.6 more pounds in to my actual must regular um, of just regular honey, not the caramelized honey. This is my flavor, the other part of my honey is what the yeast are gonna hold on to. So let's get the must, other portion of the must started while the yeast rehydrate. All right, so I'm gonna use the same process. Uh, I need five pounds of honey, about five basically. So this right now weighs, if I'm not mistaken, 10.8, so I'll need it to end at five. 0.8 pounds um, and so basically I'm just going to pour out some and then weigh it and pour out some and weigh it and just kind of do that so I can have a more accurate measurement of how, many, how much I'm using. So let's try to get it off 5 pounds, assuming that's about half of what's in here. And I already put a little water at the bottom. We'll see if that's about. Now this bucket did weigh a couple pounds, probably two pounds, so there's gonna be a little bit left in here, probably enough to make a hydromel of some sort. So I might, I might just keep the bucket and just throw some water on top at some point and make a hydromel. All right, so now let's see how much this weighs. Need a lid, of course. 
Six point eight. Hold on, let's see. Seven point. What? Seven point four. So we need to uh, get even more out. We wanted to get to five point eight. All right. Let's see about that. We are now at, let's see, I don't even know if I'll register at this point. Yeah, so it's, it's actually too low to register, so let's do this. I'm going to take in 180, and I weigh. 173.8, so that's what, 4.2? One five, six, oh goodness, math, 6.2. So just a, a little bit more honey to take out of this. And realistically, I don't have, I'm basically just gonna empty this part out. So that weighed 10.8. I'm just gonna empty this into here. Uh, there's not enough for me to do anything with this at the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll use the rest of this honey. So let's say uh, what I'll do is work my system backwards. I'm actually going to add honey, or excuse me, water into this bucket real fast. This is the honey bucket, and uh, get all the honey out of it, measure it to see how much the bucket itself weighs, and then uh, kind of go from there. So here is some water, room temp water. Uh, and I have, I had a, a good friend give me, it's really an aeration, not aeration, excuse me, uh, degassing wand, but I'm using it for this case for uh, mixing because I can. So, It's 23.2, that's a lot of honey. However, um, I want it to be a little sweet. A boche will uh, need more honey, ultimately. So now, the next step is we've just finished out this entire 60 pound pail, which is super awesome, but it means I have to find more honey, ultimately. And then, uh, really I want to start and mix in this so I could add more water and um, mix this must around. All right, I'm gonna safely assume that that's pretty mixed up. I mean, I've, I've mixed it quite a bit. Uh, I want to dip, go ahead and uh, we'll just wait for the yeast and everything to start uh, acclimating more. The honey is that was um, caramelized is now 
sitting. So what we're going to in just a moment take and add some of the honey in and see if we can mix that all together. All right, we're gonna try and make our true must. So we have our very hot honey water, or honey, that has been caramelized and oh man, look at that color. That is beautiful. And I anticipate I'm gonna have a lot of uh, sediment, which is totally okay. But there's all of that, you can see in the inside here. Man, that color is super dark, I'm excited for that. Now we want to add some more water, so we equalize it all out. There's some more. Oh, we're getting everywhere. There we go. So far I've used four pounds of gallons, goodness, of water. And uh, we're gonna mix this up. So now I want to ultimately add some more water on top of this. I'm gonna open up my other container. I wanted this to be, uh, like I said, about a six or seven gallon. This is a 7.9 gallon container and it's almost full because there's so much honey I added and there's a lot of water, of course, but uh, realistically, I wanted to get it up to still a fermentable range. So probably around this range right here. So just a little taller, just enough room for there to be some uh, fermentation to go on top. So here's, a little more water. I need to really gauge how much water I'm adding in exactly, so I'm gonna do that real fast. Okay, so here's a one gallon container that I've had previously, and I just filled using my spring water. So we're adding, this is now five gallons of water. I have splash everywhere. We can realistically probably add, let's see what happens if I start adding a sixth gallon of water. All right, here's gallon number six. We're gonna stop ah, right there, because we gotta have room for our yeast water. All right, now this is a very full container, um, and with the yeast water go on top, there's, there's still room for fermentation to happen. Um, I wanted to fill it up pretty full. Uh, so then our next step is, we're going to, the yeast are almost ready to be further acclimated. They've been sitting for about 15 minutes, and in about 10 minutes we'll take and we'll add some of this must in. But, I want to stir it some more, and then we need to get a gravity reading. So here's some more stirring. Alright, it is time for a gravity reading. So let's see where we are currently at with this huge batch. Looks like we're sitting at about 1 point, 1 .1, uh, uh, 1.1, 1.105. Yeah, about 1.105. So if I'm looking at my numbers, that means that I have a possibility of about, uh, wow, that's perfect. That's about 15%. Um, so. The D47 will ferment out to about about 14%, uh, leaving that residual 1% sweetness. Now, uh, I'll talk about this in a moment, but there's something special about a Boche that's different than the rest of every other mead we make, and I'll talk about it in just a moment. All right, so we are ready to go ahead and start acclimating our yeast to this new... Uh, to this new must. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some here. And then, um, ultimately, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna add this yeast water into the mix of everything. I'm actually making, making kind of a yeast starter because this uh, must itself needs to drop down in temperature for a while. And then the yeast really need to get used to the 1.05, 1.105 gravity they're gonna experience. So, uh, I, in a moment, what I'm gonna do is take and uh, add even more must into a, um, a one gallon fermenter container and let it uh, start as a yeast starter. All right, so like I said, we're gonna add some, uh, some more yeast, or goodness, must into this. And this is gonna be our yeast starter that's in this one gallon carboy. So uh, I'm going to, without hopefully making a mess,
All right, so uh, I've put some must into here. I'm not too worried about the yeast getting scared because this is only about 80 or uh, 89 to 90 degrees and my yeast water will be just fine. So I'm gonna actually pour my yeast water in to um, this container now. And I'm actually gonna do it kind of over, um, over the must so I don't end up spilling it all over everything. So it's kind of a sketchy way to do this. But here we go. Okay, so now uh, I have my 7.9 gallon fermenter ready to go and this is my yeast starter with uh, the, some must and the yeast in it and that's gonna sit I'm really going to see how long the activity takes for the activity to start. If it takes a quick time and then they just start kicking off, that's perfect. I might um, let them sit for a day or two and then acclimate as my yeast starter. Now the point of a yeast starter is to allow your yeast a greater chance to uh, get going and to multiply because really you're throwing them, in, throwing them into a high gravity and this is a high gravity, higher gravity mead. So they need as many uh, troops as possible, so to speak. So I'll let that sit for one or two days. The last step of this is to uh, go ahead and aerate it. Now I was spinning it earlier with that drill gun and uh, using my degassing wand, and that degassing wand um, doesn't add oxygen. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my aerator in and let that sit for, it's gonna feel like a long, long time. So I can start aerating this. Um, more and more. Now the alternative with adding air is you can also buy oxygen, straight oxygen, and just basically pump it right in. And I need to do that at some point. I haven't bought the stuff um, to do that just because money. Um, so I'll, I'll add oxygen into that and oxygen into this so that both have a greater chance to survive. So one thing I want to do with this is uh, is actually try something new. So this is 7.9 gallons. I predict I'll get about six out of it in total. Uh, I want to take and I have a bunch of three gallon carboys. So I want to take one three gallon carboy with half of this ultimately after it's fermented out, and then um, and do. I, I haven't totally prepared exactly what I want to do, but I want to use one as just a regular boche, three gallons of a regular boche, and then the other three or maybe one, I want to kind of test some things and see if I can maybe try some different flavors or add some different things so I have something along with my boche. So I really want to test that and see how that turns out. All right, so it has been 48 hours of a yeast starter. So um, I took some of the must and put it into this carboy and then of course I have my yeast and um, really I'm giving the yeast an opportunity to start to multiply because the caramelization of the honey as well as just the gravity and everything makes uh, yeast have a little harder time starting. So this gave them a head start, a running start, so to speak. Really simply enough, all I need to do is open up my container and go ahead and pitch my yeast in um, and then do a little bit of stirring. I want to make sure there's plenty of air and oxygen. So let me go ahead and, and pitch my uh, yeast water in. I'm also using a staggered nutrient schedule with this, and so I want to go ahead and add my nutrients in right now. I've got a little baggie that I have uh, created. This little baggie has my yeast nutrient and my yeast energizer, and I've combined the two. So I'm going to add um, uh, basically a quarter of this into here. So now this is closed and ready to sit for a while. I want to make sure, of course, my airlock doesn't end up getting filled with a bunch of stuff, so stick it in just enough. Um, this is pretty close to the top, and that's okay. Uh, there's still room for fermentation, but this part is done now. The yeast has been introduced, and it's ready to sit and hopefully kick up with fermentation. So now the next step is to go ahead and uh, put it back into my little... Um, my refrigerator here so it can ferment at about 60 degrees uh, because the temperature range is 59 to 60, 
65 or 66 for the D47. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching this video and uh, sticking around. I have a bunch of stuff to clean, so I gotta uh, wrap this up. But this is gonna sit for a while. I don't know how long it'll take to ferment out. I believe that since it's at about a 15%, that my D47 will take it to 14%, leaving some residual sweetness. Now, I was gonna also mention in this that the reason, a special thing about a Boche is that Ultimately, there are caramelized sugars that the yeast cannot metabolize, meaning they're going to remain there in that sugar form and be sweetness. So this will naturally be a fairly sweet mead. Uh, I used, uh, it was six gallons of water, a little less than six gallons. This is probably, let's say I used five and uh, three quarter gallons right now for, and I said, what, 21 pounds of honey? What was my math? 15.2, 7 point something, like 22 pounds of honey. So uh, that's quite a bit of honey, four, four pounds basically um, per gallon. So that's a lot of residual sweetness and I'm okay with that. I like a sweet boche, I like a sweet mead and I like, you know, we'll see how it ultimately pans out. But um, those caramelized sugars are really what makes a, a um, boche unique in the color and the, um, that it's just a very nice flavor and I enjoy it quite a bit. But um, if you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe down below. There's a little bell you can hit and you can be notified about future videos. I have a bunch of links down below of Facebook, which I, we have a great community going on there. So go find me on Facebook at Manmade Meadery, um, a Twitter, a Instagram, and then a Patreon. So if you want to support me and help me be able to buy things um, to continue to make meat in a better way. Um, I, that's there and then of course PayPal so all those things are really helpful for me and help me keep the channel running and continue to make more meads and uh, grow as a creator um, but other than that I'm super excited for this for this mead I wanted to make a big boche for a while my last one was one gallons this one is almost eight gallons so that's pretty cool to be able to make more unfortunately I depleted the last of my um, my <laughs> 60 pound honey bucket, so I'll have to do something about that in the future. I don't know just yet what I'll do, but regardless, um, there will be more mead videos to be made in the future. So thank you guys for watching. See you next time, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.